Welcome to my channel and I'm back with you once again with another video of Microsoft Flight Simulator 24. In the series of videos that I'm doing for the Enables Airbus A350, this is going to be another one in which I will show you how to take this plane up in the air and how to fly it on autopilot. Before this, I've uploaded videos in which I've shown you how to carry out the maintenance of uh, this plane and how to configure the FMS and the EFB and uh, plus uh, starting this plane from the cold and dark state. Uh, after this video, I will also upload another one in which I will show you how to perform an ILS approach and landing. So today I'm doing this sh short flight from uh, Riyadh to Qatar and uh, the plane is uh, up and running and it's ready for the flight. You can see that the takeoff configuration is uh, normal and uh, everything is looking good so far. Um, I just forgot to mention uh, that uh, for all the videos I will give you the links in the description. So if uh, um, you want to just go and check any of the sections you can just go and watch any video as per your learning curve for this plane. So before the taxi I would just like to tell you one more thing. I remember in the early days of the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 uh, this was something really new in the Enables planes and uh, this is uh, the setting, the rudder controls a tiller. So actually this is the tiller which turns the nose wheel um, during the taxi and you can just turn left and right and navigate your way through the taxiways. So this uh, tiller is uh, actually controlled by the rudder if you set it to yes. So I'm using the Thrustmaster Airbus edition, uh, the A321 side stick. So the rudder is there on this controller. So I always keep it at yes uh, because then I can move the nose wheel because I don't, I'm not using any separate controller for the tiller. And auto tiller disconnect, this is for the takeoff. So once you are on the runway, the tiller is disconnected and then you can just control the rudder. So this is uh, one thing. So remember this thing to turn these two options on so that you can carry out the, uh, you know, the taxi. So everything is good now. And uh, let's re release the parking brakes. That's it. This is the parking brake. And uh, let's give some power to the engines and take this plane to the runway. Now I'm near the runway 33 right and ready for the takeoff. So before the takeoff, I would just like to tell you a few things. Uh, let me just turn. So I can hold short of the runway because this is the point where you get the clearance for the departure. So as I'm not using ATC right now, so I'm not doing that. But uh, I will upload another video in which I will um, uh, go through the video communication basics of this plane using Beyond ATC. So I will demonstrate that in that video. So uh, for this uh, takeoff, what I'm going to do is this. First of all, let's change the view because uh, right now the chart is not required. So let's get back to this view. Now you, you will see all the speed and the altitude constraints over here on this screen in the navigation display. Number one, number two. For the takeoff, I will uh, say first of all set the thrust to 50%. Uh, once the engines will spool up, then I will move the thrust lever to this option, flex to temp. Uh, this is actually uh, deaccelerated takeoff with only 83.7% of power to put less stress on the engines. I'm not taking off with full throttle. And uh, I will just uh, push this uh, side stick forward for the takeoff, as you can see this uh, plus sign over here it's moving so after 100 knots I will just release the pressure and uh, on the stick and then I will just move it here in this position and uh, at this uh, speed VR I will just pick this plane up in the air by just 10 degrees don't uh, try to go more than this bet between 10 to 15 degrees but uh, then there is a chance of a tail strike so just slowly pick up this plane up in the air <laughs> Okay, that's good. Now there is another thing that you have to do before the takeoff is go through the checklist. So uh, for the lineup, yeah, the cabin is secured and uh, takeoff runway is there. Packs are on and uh, the checklist is complete. You can see the packs are on. Okay. Now these two buttons are for the air conditioning. Pack one and pack two on. That's it. So let's release uh, the brakes and... Uh, Take this plane up in the air. Everything is in the manage mode. As you can see, no 
reading is over here for the speed and for the heading and plus uh, the climb is also in the manage mode so right after the takeoff then i will take you through all the modes of the autopilot for this plane so here i am on the runway and let's push the side stick a bit and let's give 50 percent of power and now flex and 100 knots now i can release the side stick this is uh, the v1 speed and this is the vr v1 and our rotate let's see that's it and now positive rate of climb gears up now you can see this is uh, the vertical speed you have to adjust the vertical speed in such a way that your speed reduces because this is the target speed so you can have a high climb rate during the takeoff and now i can just reduce uh, this vertical speed as you can see the speed was dropping a lot I can also turn on the autopilot right now. You can see the auto throttle is now active, automatically activated. Now you can see that I've crossed uh, this altitude for the thrust reduction. So move the thrust levers to climb to this position and that's it. Now the thrust levers will remain in this position for the rest of the flight. And now you can see the target speed is 230 knots and the plane will actually adjust the vertical speed in such a way that the speed keeps on increasing and at 230 knots again, uh, it will start to climb. Now there is this uh, altitude constraint as well. At this point, the plane should be above 5,000 feet. So I can now retract the flaps as the speed was more than this uh, speed. You can see this S was there. So above this speed, you have to retract the flaps. And plus, this is the green dot speed. The plane can fly without any slats and flaps. after the speed great flaps actually provide lift during the takeoff but uh, they also provide drag so that's why you have to retract the flaps and you take off with optimum settings for the flaps now uh, there will be some constraints uh, as the plane is in the manage mode as you can see this climb option is there so if i bring my cursor over here and if i you no know, click this uh, this button once uh, i see the down arrow then the plane will be in open climb now what will happen is this that in this scenario the plane will keep on climbing and it will not follow any of the altitude constraints during the climb so it will stop following any constraints so that's why always uh, climb in the manage mode initially and once you are used to the simulator and you are flying with the atc maybe at times you have to go with an open climb you don't want to follow the restrictions then you can just like do it in the open climb. So right now you can see that the plane is adjusting its vertical speed to maintain the given speed as per the flight plan. Now there is this option of vertical speed. If I click this, now the vertical speed will become the priority. So now I can change this vertical speed. As you can see now this mode over here in the FMA, if you look at this option, you will see that the vertical speed is 1,700 feet per minute. So this is the climb rate. Now, if I go with a very aggressive climb rate, you will see that the speed will reduce because right now, climb rate is the priority. So always uh, climb with this mode, the open mode or the <laughs> uh, manage mode. No need to use the vertical speed. Now you can see I've uh, taken it back to the manage mode. Climb is there. And now the plane will adjust the vertical speed and the speed will increase and now it will stabilize at this. Now the plane is also about to cross 10,000 feet so you can uh, turn off uh, the lights. So let me just do it right now just to you know shorten up the video. And uh, seat belt signs, I can just turn them off. And uh, plus uh, I can disarm the ground. Spoilers no longer required. Now you have uh, this option again, speed. Now, 
you can adjust the speed. Remember this thing that uh, below 10,000 feet, the speed should not be more than 250 knots. So if let's say if you want to have a higher vertical speed, if you think that the vertical speed is not good enough, then you can reduce the speed. But don't go below the green dot speed. You can just like remain over here in this part. Now you can see that the speed is the priority right now and the vertical speed is getting adjusted because at a slower speed the plane can have a higher climb rate. So this is how you can manage the climb rate as well. So now the speed is back in the manage mode. Now for the heading, um, it's very interesting. You can uh, click this once you see the up arrow, or once you see the down arrow, you can click it and you can take uh, this navigation mode uh, out of the manage mode to the heading mode. If I just take it back again, if you see the up arrow again, you will see nav. Now it means the plane is in the nav mode and it will follow the flight plan. And you can see this uh, flight path is a solid line. So if I just take it back to this mode, you will see this dotted line. That's it. So now whatever the heading I will select over here, the plane will actually follow that. Now you can see it's turning left. And if I just change the heading over here, then it's turning right. Now then there is another issue uh, which the beginners uh, face is uh, the deviation from this uh, flight path. Once you deviate from the flight path to a certain distance, then you won't be able to follow this flight plan again. So let me just demonstrate it to you. So I will uh, take this plane into the heading mode and I will uh, turn left and I will try to create a deviation from this flight plan, a huge de deviation. As now you can see the deviation is 0.5 towards 0.5 nautical miles towards the left from the flight path. If I was going right, then it would have been 0.5 right. So now you can see this will keep on increasing. And at some point, if I try to follow this uh, flight path, it will not be possible. So maybe you just try to, you know, explore things and you want to go back to the flight plan. So now the deviation is 1.4 nautical miles towards the left side from the flight plan. And if I just go back to the manage mode, now you will see that uh, the heading mode is uh, still active and nav is armed. So the plane is trying to go back to the flight plan, but it cannot. So for this, what you have to do is this, you have to intercept this line. It's not even turning. Now I've even crossed the transition altitude so I can change the barometric pressure to the standard so uh, just bring your cursor over here and once you see the up arrow just change it to standard I'm using the legacy settings for the mouse so that's why you know I've just turned off everything but uh, you can just see I think uh, if you if you have not turned on the legacy settings then you can even see the controls once you bring your cursor over here how to interact with these switches and buttons and knobs <laughs> So uh, now there is a deviation of 4.4 uh, nautical miles from uh, the, uh, the flight plan towards the left side and nav mode is armed. So in this case, when I, when I will intercept this flight plan, this plane will automatically start to follow this flight plan. So let's uh, change the heading and let's, uh, you can see this point over here, this bug, the heading bug. And now I can intercept this flight plan and let's see what happens. And now you can see that the nav mode is now active as uh, the plane was near this uh, flight plan. So now it's out of the heading mode and it's back to the nav mode. So this uh, what happens when you take this uh, heading mode into the manage mode and set the heading after the deviation. So it will just start to follow the flight plan. Now there is another thing uh, over here on your screens you can see this arrow. This uh, is the top of climb. So this is the point where the plane will be at 28,000 feet. Is it 28,000 or 29,000 feet for this flight? Let me just uh, check again. 
if I go back to initialization, it's 29,000 feet. So let's adjust the altitude, 29,000. And that's it. So uh, I'm not using actually step climb for this flight. And plus, as I'm not doing it from uh, with the ATC, so that's why. I don't have instructions, so that's why I'm just straight away climbing up to 29,000 feet or flight level 290. But uh, once I will make this video in which uh, I will show you how to uh, carry out the radio communications with this plane and how to uh, fly this uh, plane with the help of the ATC. And for that video, I will use Beyond ATC because uh, that's uh, better than the, uh, than the one the Microsoft Flight Simulator has. So hopefully this was a useful video for you. And now you will be able to fly this uh, plane on autopilot. And now you know all the modes. So I have uh, just uh, actually tried to keep things simple for the beginners and to the point. But still, if uh, you want to ask me questions, you can uh, use the comment section or if you want to add anything to this video, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for staying with me. Have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.